All right, guys, welcome to The Wall Away. This is Imran on The Wall, and I'm joined by Mr. Habib Qadri, superintendent and former college D1 basketball player, former high school basketball player. So he's been coaching, he's played for a long time, and he's coaching. Uh, so we got something very interesting to talk about today, Habib, and I want to talk about the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. So lately, so okay, Brooklyn Nets, let's put it in perspective again. They had Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Kyrie Irving first, and then Kevin Durant signed with DeAndre Jordan. And then recently they traded for uh, James Harden. And then they got Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. And then they just got LaMarcus Aldridge on buyouts. Mm -hmm. So a lot of talk has been going on in the last few days about how this is unfair and this is cheating. And uh, somebody compared this to like the situation in Golden State when he signed with Golden State, Kevin Durant, he, he being go, uh, Kevin Durant, and that this is not, this is not, this is like a cheap way to, for him to win. Mm -hmm. So I was very personally very much against what he did in Golden State because mm -hmm. they, Golden State was already a championship team without him. Right, right, right. And Kevin Durant had gone to the finals without Golden State, he lost, and he had gone to the Western Conference Finals multiple times, right. and they had almost beat Golden State the year prior. Correct. They were up three to one. So that for me was uh, a little bit unfair. Yeah, but the situation now for me is completely different. But f firstly, what are your thoughts just on hearing the individuals that I mentioned all being on one team together? I mean, a lot of people might call it, "Oh man, they're making a super team," right? And but now this is what the NBA has become, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're they you know it used to be one or maybe two players, and then everyone's kind of builds around them, and you know you got what you have, and you just kind of fight it out. Mm. But now it's kind of like, well, some might maybe some of us old timers might say, "Well, man, they're just kind of." packing people up and kind of like, you know, now using free agency to just make this, not just some support staff, but you're really getting all these all-stars all together, mm -hmm. which could be like an all-star team maybe a few years ago, right? So, but at the same time, hey, you know, it's, 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 it's part of the, 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 you know, it's not like they're the only teams that have done right. that. So it's kind of like the new process of the new way of doing things. So you can't, you can't really knock them if they have the capabilities, they're under the cap, they're doing what they have to do or, and it's, it's, it's approved by the league, you know, kind of go with it. But at the end, two of the three players are really also at their, at, not to say end of their career, but at the end, they, they maybe some of their prime might. So I think my main issue is, okay, like you just referenced it, Kyrie Irving is probably the youngest out of the core guys. Yes. Kevin Durant in his 30s, James Harden in his 30s, mm -hmm. Blake Griffin in his early to mid 30s, mm -hmm. uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, 36. Okay. So these guys are not uh, young spry chickens anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant coming off a full Achilles rupture yeah. and came back like a beast, mm -hmm. right? James Harden has probably been one of the most consistent offensive players in the last 10 years. Yes. Heavy minutes, heavy usage, uh, has not been able to make it to the finals. Well, he made it to the finals mm -hmm. once with the Thunder, but since then he has not made it to the finals or won anything. Um, Kyrie Irving, again, the youngest guy, but he was the first person on the team, so you can't penalize him mm -hmm. for joining the team when he did. But again, so James Harden got traded there, getting older, hasn't won anything, tried his best in Houston. Kevin Durant, full Achilles rupture. Blake Griffin was like averaging, before he got here, like 10 points, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which is a, a big decrease from what he yeah. was averaging back in his Clipper days. And LaMarcus Aldridge is 36 years old. Mm -hmm. He gave his best years to Portland and San Antonio. It's not mm -hmm. like, uh, and in San Antonio, he was not even in the rotation anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think the criticism is unfair, but like you mentioned, this is the league now, right? We grew up when it was MJ, Scotty, Shaq and Penny, mm -hmm. Malone and Stockton. Right. You had your, your, your duo, yep. and then you had a supporting cast, and sometimes that was good enough. Yep. But what we've seen in the last 10 years or so, after LeBron and uh, company yeah. joined forces in Miami, and maybe even before that with what the guys did in the, in the Boston Celtics. Celtics, correct. Right? KG, Rondo, Pierce, yeah. and Ray Allen. Yeah. Um, the name of the game now is you need the best guys and the most yeah. talent. But even in that argument, what I'm saying is that it's yeah. not the same argument to compare them to the Warriors because these guys are older, these guys are coming off injury, and some of these guys have given their best years to teams where they have not won anything. Right. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. I think it's, it's there. Now, what also plays a big part is like you might have Golden State where two of the players were already there and they added two. Mm. Boston, uh, in Boston, same situation maybe. I think Pierce was always there and they right. added maybe one or two. This, this um, New Jersey situation, you got like everyone coming from nowhere and making this mm. team happen, right? But at the end, you can't, you can't knock it. I think it's, just, it's, it's, it's there. And I think the more of the challenge is now you have the team, but how are you gonna make this all work? 
exactly. is going to be the key factor. Right? In one I mean, season. That, yeah, in one season. Mm. With the new, so everyone's new. The players are all new. The coach is new. And, and we'll see how it goes, right? Because there's that pressure of you have every, everyone there. If it doesn't happen, you know, it's, it's a bust, you know, right? So it's like championship or nothing, right? So that's, that's also stressful, right? And so that's, that's a challenge by itself. And I think you can't really uh, belabor the management or the coaching, right? Because, for example, there were criticisms of Kyrie Irving missing games for whatever reasons. Yeah. Uh, so now if you have someone like Kyrie who you're afraid that is, is going to miss games yeah. or maybe lose interest, wouldn't you trade for someone like James Harden to p potentially replace his output or to have another consistent score mm -hmm. on the team with Kevin Durant? Mm -hmm. So that's one. Uh, two, why would the front office not make moves to make the team better, right? Yeah. So again, K KD and Kyrie already on the team. DeAndre Jordan already on the team. They traded for James Harden. They got uh, Blake Griffin, again, via trade. And LaMarcus on buyouts. Yeah. So with the exception of LaMarcus Aldridge, who's 36, the other, th the other uh, player acquisitions came through trades, which yeah. means it took two parties, their team and another team, to come to an agreement, right? Yeah. These teams, did not. no one coerced them or forced them right. necessarily into doing these yeah. trades with the Nets. They could yeah. have traded them anywhere, right? Um, but also from a perspective now of leading and uh, did you see that quote from Damian Lillard, Lillard recently? Oh, he's kind of like he's against his whole notion of the super team oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. joining forces mm -hmm. and he's more on that like 80s, 90s vibe. Yeah, right. So the question is, is it better to be like a lone, gun, a lone gunner and you're always with one team for your whole career but you never win anything? Like yeah. I love Damian Lillard. Yeah. Or is it better to kind of now as you get older realize, look, I can't do it alone. Right. Let me join forces and let me get this thing that I've always coveted, which is the championship. Right. Look, and, and, and it's going to be a lot on these individuals, right? They might want to, everyone has that pride of like, well, I'm going to make it happen. Right. Now, at a certain time, you go a few years and like, well, is it going to happen? Mm. Right. I still, I, I honestly think KD could have kind of, if they could have pulled it off, they could have, I think, had a chance back right. at, or, or land at the OPC. Thunder, right? I agree. So, but, so I could see Damian Lillard's aspect, but maybe four years from now, he might be like, hmm. I don't know how many people want to roll to Portland, right? Mm. He might not get that support that he wants, which he should deserve. Mm. He, I mean, they still have a solid team, right? I mean, mm. his front court, uh, you know, McCollum, the, the McCollum it's, it's no joke, yeah. right? But just kind of like, hey, how do they get over that hump, right? When everyone's just kind of stacked. But again, the Nets, they didn't bully anyone into get doing this. They went through the process, kind of had that. But you made a solid point. Look, sometimes players, Get injured, right? Mm. It happened with the. It happened. Think what happened with the Warriors, right? Clay Thompson gets injured. They, they, they can't win that championship. Plus, it affects them for two years, mm. right? Now they're like they just can't win, right? So you sometimes need those two, three players if someone something happens. And then right now you'll see even with the Lakers, right? You got you know uh, LeBron got injured for some time. Anthony Davis gets injured for some time. They start losing a little bit. So those are moments are going to happen so you know at the end if it's if it's something that's there it's something they did legally and, and right now the process and everyone went, went through you yeah you could be frustrated mm. but you can't you can't knock them if, they, if at the end 20 30 years from now there's if they win the championship it's going to say the nets not going to say asterisk to, you know un, you know unfair trades you know made a super team no one's going to know what's your take in terms of now roles now james harden has become uh, like the key ball handler and distributor. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Kyrie Irving? Because I had this discussion with someone last week. Okay. Where this is a, this is the era now of positionless basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So when people look at Kyrie Irving, they say, okay, six foot three, six foot four, has to be the point guard. But in today's league, it's not necessarily that he has to be the point guard, right? Right. right. He just has to have a role mm -hmm. on the team, and his role is slashing and scoring. Yeah. So what do you what do you see as his role? Let me ask you that. For Kyrie or yeah, Harden? Kyrie. I mean, look, at the end, I mean, it still is, you know, the guard. I mean, there are going to be the distributions, right? And that's why I got Steve Nash right now, one of the best distributors of all time, point right. guard. So now, to work all these factors in and saying, well, how, much, how many shots does this person need? How many shots does this person need? And, that, and Kyrie, yeah, he might be a point guard, but he still wants the shots too, mm. right? And he, I think when he first started off, he had LeBron, I mean, you know, King James. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to let him take majority of the shots as he develops. But mm. I think he's coming to his own and say, well, I... I I am a man, like I am maybe the man, or this is my team, you know, those conversations, just like when he was at the Celtics. So I, I think those factors, I think he's going to have to understand that in the long run, if the goal is championship, you're gonna have to go with who's on the hot end, who's having mm -hmm. that, that, that mm -hmm. week, who's really 
you know, making it happen, get that ball to them. Mm. Like Harden's been kind of, you know, he's been giving some assists too, right? You know, I, you know, he's he's his average, yeah, he's, 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 average. Still, he's kind of yeah, so he's yeah. kind of passing it out too. So I think that that's there and have that. But Harden, I think, is more of that score slasher. As Kyrie, yes, he's a scorer, but at the end, he, he's an individual who could also be a point card kind of distribute. So it's it's going to be a unique kind of situation, especially when not things get tight at the end of the season. And when playoff mm. comes, that's what I'm worried about. Right now, they're going to go. They're going to want to start winning. But now when you start playing tough teams in the playoffs, seven who's got ball, the ball? Who's going, who has the ball? Mm. That's going to be that's going, that's going to be the challenge, you know. And, and Steve Nash, good luck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the perfect guy to handle something like this because yeah. when he was with the Suns, he made a lot of guys a lot of money because he took like Amari started Amari. Well, Amari was <laughs> always explosive and good, but he yeah. took guys who were like level, yeah. average ish yeah. and a little bit better than oh, average, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he made them look much better, right? True. True. Now, in your opinion, bigger acquisition for them, Blake Griffin at this stage or LaMarcus Aldridge at this stage? Um, I think, so, you know, when they had DeAndre Jordan, right, I was like, okay, they got a rebound, or, you know, and they have that. And I think Blake Griffin also, because in the last few years, he's changed his game to like an outside game, yep. which is good. Yep. But he can still play down low a little bit mm. too, right? And they need that bound, you know, like, hey, no doubt Kevin Durant does get rebounds, but you just need some guys and bruisers. Now, if, if Blake Griffin comes in, like, yeah, I am going to be that, the guy down low, get a little roughed up, get the rebounds. When I get the opportunities to take that shot, then that, that's that's great. Mm. But Mark, but Lamarcus is a down low post player, right? So hey, they need that bucket down there. Everyone else might stretch, but hey, they maybe were thinking like, okay, we don't really DeAndre Jordan. He has to be set up for the shot. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't have a post up. Though, he doesn't right? have a post up. Yeah. So this is your post up. Suppose things are just not going. Shots are not falling. It's Lamarcus. Lamarcus, right? So I, I kind of look at, hey, you know what? They might have thought about all this, mm -hmm. right? They might have thought like, okay, this is good here. We get this individual here. Lamar so I think I like the idea because Blake, DeAndre, I think the same way there. But still, I, I feel like Blake has that three-point shot. He has, a, he has a nice high post kind of like, you know, uh, 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 yep. uh, 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 a shot that kind of yep. goes thing. From you know, uh, from the corners, you know, um, 15, 20 foot. DeAndre is just that rebound, catch dunk, up. catch, go yeah. out there. Hmm. But Marcus gives you that one post player that m he could get you that bucket, maybe one or two buckets if you need it, where things are just not going well. Stabilize it, and I think he knows his role, so hmm. he's not gonna be like, man, I want the ball. Why are you not giving me the ball? So hopefully that works out, and especially if someone gets injured, that they, they, they have enough now support staff that they should they should do some damage, right? <laughs> Any final thoughts on general in terms of like thought things that come to mind in terms of leadership, organizational development, team building, anything that well, resonates with you? I mean, from a leadership standpoint, I mean, you, you, now you have a thing of like you have three alphas. Mm. You might have had in their primes five alphas, right? Mm. But now you got three alphas trying to give a make sure that everyone still feels like they are contributing to what they perceive they need to how much mm. they should contribute. Mm. Balance that off, but at the same time reaching the goal of winning the championship, mm. right? What's nice is that at least you have, at least out of those three guys, two, well, all of them have won some championship. Yeah, well, except one of them hasn't won the championship. Mm. So, so, but, but there's still that hunger. So the hopefully for that, when you want that, the hunger to, to win, you will kind of go ahead and give and take and say, you know what, I'm going to step back on this thing. So that, so as a leader for Steve Nash, is how do you balance all those mm. minds, right? And those and, and, and their personalities. I think that's going to be there. Um, from 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 the you know like the you know financial standpoint, like you know they kind of did their numbers and figured out how to do it, right? So they kind of pulled it off. <laughs> now can they sustain it for several years? No, mm. but can like hey, you know what? Mm. Putting all the money in now for this year, or next year. Hey, mm. hey, but sometimes you just do that and saying for especially. A city that hasn't won, mm. you're going to go ahead and put that, you know, you know, and say, let's go there. Unless it was in the ABA, I think, you know, with Dr. J in back sure. in the days. So I think that that people were like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do this, right? Mm. And I think, um, you know, they got that, you know, the nice, you know, Barclay Center, you know, so and this, you know, and, and they, they got fan base that hopefully could make it happen. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, no problem. All right. While away, listeners, thank you guys so much. Uh, see you guys next time. Like and subscribe. Take care.